How are you guys tonight? Good to see you all. Good to see you all. Uh, tonight, we're just have a short devotional. Um, we're going to look in Scripture at a, a one verse out of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And uh, so if you want to turn there, that'd be great. Uh, just a little context. This is the last letter that, is, that Paul is, has written uh, in the New Testament. And it goes down right before he is, is executed in Rome. And so it goes down as kind of his last, his last written communication that we at least have. And, uh, and you might remember that he loves Timothy. Timothy was his primary disciple. Timothy is pastoring the church in Ephesus. And, uh, and, and Paul is just giving him a few things. He's, he says to him later, in the, in, earlier in the book, that he's about to be poured out like a drink offering. And he knows that his time is coming. And he wants to just communicate a few things to Timothy before he's gone. And, uh, and so I want you to see this verse because it's a very important verse. And, uh, and it says this. It says, What you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Have you heard this verse before? There's a, a lot more in First and Second Timothy, Paul's instructions specifically to Tem- Timothy as a leader. But we're just going to look at this one today, and I want you to count for a second, how many generations of leadership do we see in this one verse? How many do you count in there? I heard a three. Any other guesses? I count four. So you have Paul, the one talking. He says to Timothy, what you have heard me say, pass on to who? Faithful men who will in turn teach others. So I want to introduce this idea to you that that discipleship as we see it in the New Testament is a four-generation task. Have you ever heard that before? So it's not enough for Paul to say to Timothy, do all the things that I've taught you to do, Timothy. Be a faithful disciple. What you've heard me say I want you to accomplish fully. He says, very similar to what Jesus said, what you've heard me say, pass on to others. In the Great Commission, Jesus tells his disciples to go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching who? Teaching these new disciples to obey all that I've commanded you. So there's an inherent piece to this that we have to understand really well. If we're going to obey the Great Commission, it's not enough to know what Jesus commanded us and to obey it. What is the command? It's to teach others to obey what Jesus commanded them. There's an assumption that the disciples of Jesus not only know Jesus' commands, but they live by them and can teach others to do the same. The way that Paul wrote this in 2 Timothy adds that secondary layer that you pass on to others who will in turn teach others. So let's just, let's just visually demonstrate this for a minute. I need a couple of volunteers. Uh, who's willing to be my disciple for the next few moments? I need three of you. All right, there's one. Who else? Who else? All right, I got one standing up. Um, Greg Hilgemeyer, I saw you wanted to volunteer, so I got Greg. Hey, on your way, why don't you go ahead and get three disciples as well? Bring, bring three with you, okay? Find, find three disciples, people who are going to obey your teaching and, uh, and follow. Oh, and you new disciples, by the way, get three with you, by the way. We got four generations. So new disciples... You need to get three disciples with you as well. So my disciples, come on up here with me, please. <clears throat> I'm going to stand over here on this side. So my, my, my first three, uh, come on up here and stand next to me. And then uh, have your three stand on your right. I'm going to have you stand here, Greg. And, uh, and uh, marching order. So, so where's my first three here? You're, you're, you're one of them. Come on over here and come on over here. You're one. Okay. okay. And, um, and so I want you to see how many people are walking up here. <laughs> Jesus had 12 disciples. Okay. So if each one of Jesus's disciples had disciples who had disciples, how many people could we put up on the stage if we were trying to get four generations? Probably all of you, Right. Well, what I want you to see is this multiplication effect. And I also want you to see who's the first generation? Who's my three? Raise your hand. Okay, who's the second generation who followed these guys? Raise your hands real high. Okay, and then who's that fourth generation? Go ahead and raise your hands. Okay, 
I had nothing to do with the fourth generation. I, if I'm really consistent, I can really work closely with three guys. Do you think that's possible? Yeah. And I might have a little influence in their nine, right? Maybe a little. But I have no way to spend time with three and nine. And then what was the third one? It would be 27 people. So the 27 people we call viral. Viral means it's beyond the control of the founder. It gets outside of my ability to produce. Does that make sense? Hey, give these guys a hand. Uh, you guys did awesome. You're all fully formed, wonderful disciples. You're dismissed. <laughs> You're dismissed. <laughs> well done, good and faithful. <laughs> why, why is this important? Why is this a fun little exercise we can do for a few minutes on a Wednesday? Because we're challenging you. We believe that every follower of Jesus, every single one of you that call Jesus Lord, is called to make disciples. But I want you to see it doesn't stop there. If it stops there, you become the last link in the chain. And that's a problem. The command of Jesus is that this movement called Christianity would continue to roll out through his people to the lost. And the only way that happens is if your disciples will make disciples who will make disciples and the chain continues to many generations. We are all the result of people's faithfulness down through the generations. And so my encouragement is don't be the last link. And don't think that because you have a disciple that that fixes it. Encourage them. Ask them, what are your disciples' names? We, uh, I, I, when I'm talking to people that I'm leading and training and disciple making, I always talk about the one, three, nine. If I'm one, who are the three that I'm caring for and who are the three they're caring for? That's the nine. And I can pray for the three and the nine. The 27 gets out of control. And that's assuming you only have three. Jesus had 12, right? You do the math and this can get really cumbersome quickly. And this is the whole idea of multiplication. It's not addition. It's not a person comes to our church every now and then, and the church grows by addition. That's nice, and praise God when people come one by one. But what we see in Scripture is multiplying effects, where the kingdom of God moves throughout a whole population in a short amount of time, where he moves throughout an entire geographical region in a short amount of time. This weekend, I get to preach on, on Acts chapter 13, and it's where the church sets apart, sets apart Paul and Barnabas. It's the first time we see in Scripture an intentional movement of God towards the lost. What a powerful thing it's going to be to talk about this weekend. But I want, you to tell, I want to tell you, it's no less powerful today. And if each one of us will understand that God wants to use us to reach not just one, but two, and pray for four generations of disciples, we won't be able to, we won't be able to contain the disciples in a building like this. We can't build the building big enough to contain the disciples. The work of the Lord can go so much further and so much farther than we could ever ask or imagine. And that's what scripture talks about. I'll give you one little, one little thing. There's this parable, you've, you've heard it. It's the parable of the soils. You've heard this story, right? The first soil, they throw the seeds out there and the seeds don't even take root. They get eaten up by the birds before anything happens. And there's a second soil where they grow up just a little bit, but it says the, the cares of the world, the sun scorches them and they're burnt out. So it's like a believer that just gets started but then loses their faith. And then you have a third soil where it says they grow up, but some, the enemy sows tares among them. You remember this story? And here's the crazy thing. They look perfectly fine, but they never bear fruit. Think about that. And then the fourth soil, and not only is it healthy, but what kind of fruit does it bear? Does anybody remember? A hundredfold. Healthy, fruitful disciple making is not an addition type of problem. It's a multiplication problem. Now, I can tell you, I'm not sure that I have borne a hundredfold fruit in my Christian walk. It's a big standard, and it probably is really scary for a lot of us. But we have to bear fruit. The alternate that we are Christians that look like we have it all together, 
but we never bear fruit is also terrifying. If you finish that parable, it doesn't end well for that particular form of, of plant or, or field. And so guys, when we're talking about this, I want you to pray. Start praying that God would give us fourth generation disciples here at First Baptist Church. I think that this is probably a fairly new term to almost everyone in this church. But start praying for it. And let's see if God will bring us a harvest that we could never imagine. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for all that you're doing. We thank you, Father, that you chose men and women to follow you that have throughout the ages continued to share their faith. God, throughout times in history where it was impossible, we call them the dark ages. And somehow, even through those times, you retained a faithful element that maintained and shared their faith with new believers who did the same thing all the way down to us, Father. We're so grateful for your love. We're so grateful for your mercy. But Father, help us not to be the last link in this chain. Help us, Father, continue to pursue disciples and that we would train them how to make disciples. And that, God, we would encourage them to continue making disciples. And that, Father, through our efforts and your spirit, God, that your kingdom would grow throughout our region and throughout our families and our communities and, God, to the very ends of the earth. God, we know this is your heart. We pray that you would make it so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys have a wonderful night. God bless you.